I'd like to talk about why I consume cheese every single day and why you should too. No, it's not because I'm from Wisconsin. It's because cheese is a great protein source. It's almost like a probiotic and it's low in lactose. Okay, so it's totally keto friendly. No, I'm not talking about processed cheese or Velveeta cheese. I think the best cheese would be goat's cheese and sheep cheese. And I'm gonna focus more on that in this talk. Sheep cheese, goat cheese is A2 casein. That's the protein and it's not gonna create as much issue on your digestive system. Some of the oldest people in the world consume sheep and goat cheese. You're consuming a lot less lactose. Okay, that's the milk sugar, cow's milk in general. You're looking at about, um, I don't know, 3.8 to maybe 4% lactose. Mozzarella cheese or cottage cheese, we're looking at between one and uh, 4% lactose. But when we look at goat's cheese or sheep cheese, now we're looking at like a 0.5%, that's a half of 1%. So it's so tiny, it's you're not gonna have any issues with that lactose component. And so now we have less of a problem with lactose intolerance because it's barely anything there. And also less of a problem with this casein. If you even had an allergy to casein, it's higher in protein, higher in vitamin A, E, folic acid, certain B vitamins, calcium, CLA, which can actually help your exercise performance and weight loss. Nearly 20 to 30% of the fat in sheep and goat cheese is MCT fats. And these fats are really, really good because they bypass a lot of these systems and it goes right to the liver and it's converted right into ketones. So you're generating quick energy. They're gonna be less stress on your digestion. MCT oil is partially made by the good bacteria in the gut of these animals. I do consume cow cheese as well, but I make sure it's from high quality sources, usually from Europe. I do not do the regular cheese that's conventional. I do organic. If you can get a cheese that's been grown at high altitudes in the mountains, like the Swiss Alps, because when these animals are grazing on higher altitudes, um, the plants, the grass is higher to the sun and the sun's energy or radiation are stronger. And so that plant or grass creates higher amounts of protective elements. They're called polyphenols, which are phytonutrients. And so when you're consuming this cheese that came from an animal that ate this grass at higher altitudes, you're getting much higher polyphenols, which is also in grass-fed, grass-finished beef as well. When you introduce these polyphenols into the mitochondria, it triggers this, what's called an uncoupling effect, okay? In the mitochondria, you can generate energy. When the mitochondria is uncoupled, it goes to a different pathway. We're making a lot of heat and that's generating a lot of extra, you could say wasted energy. So it's not very efficient. And this is a good thing if you're trying to lose weight. But let me just give you another angle to this. In the 30s, there was a certain drug, DNP. When they gave this drug to people in small doses, they would lose about a pound a week, right? They were excited about that. But when they increased the dosage, they started losing like five pounds of fat per week. But it's a drug and it has side effects. It was so inefficient and wasted so much fuel, the person couldn't get energy anymore. Because you're generating less energy, the body is gonna make more mitochondria in the cell. It's called mitochondrial biogenesis, okay? And that's really, really interesting. So we have this interesting effect of these polyphenols in the cheese, creating more mitochondria uncoupling and more mitochondria. They have found uh, in some studies that um, people that live a long time have more mitochondrial uncoupling. And just as a side note on that, there's other ways to stimulate more mitochondrial uncoupling. Exercise, cold therapy, fasting, and some of these polyphenols and other phytonutrients like sulforaphane, turmeric, and the phytonutrient in green tea. And so the reason I'm even bringing up the topic is because I think it's very, very interesting to be able to get some of these phytonutrients from your foods, whether it's from a grass-fed, grass-finished meat, or even the cheese. Now, there's another topic that relates to this that, that has me analyze um, certain phytonutrients in the beef sample that actually I sent off to an experiment. If you haven't seen that video, you have to see it. I put it up right here, check it out. 